architect wanted to create a grand burial for his king. So he designed a large mastaba and placed successively smaller ones on top of it, creating a wedding cake effect. Because this was the first large stone building in the world, the builders faced many new problems. They weren't yet skilled in working stone, so the blocks that made up the pyramid were only roughly cut and fitted unevenly, one on top of another, threatening the pyramid's collapse. The architect solved the problem by slanting the walls inward so the pyramid was literally leaning against itself, preventing the unstable mass from collapsing. When the step pyramid was completed, it was the most fantastic construction the world had ever seen. Probably ten times taller than any other building, taking thousands of workers nearly two decades to complete, it must have been the talk and pride of all Egypt. You can bet that when Snefru was a kid, he was fascinated by the pyramid, and maybe even dreamed of building his own. When Sneferu became pharaoh, he had a chance to build his own pyramid at Maidum. As soon as you see it, something seems very wrong. But it's not clear exactly what. The monument appears more like an ominous tower than a pyramid. As you explore the site, more and more questions arise. Why are the walls of the burial chamber rough, unfinished? Where is the pharaoh's sarcophagus? In the burial chamber, the 4,000-year-old cedar beams lie in place, ready to lift the sarcophagus. But there's no trace of it, nor any evidence the burial chamber was ever used. It still represents a major architectural breakthrough. This is the first above-ground burial chamber in Egypt. Creating a room inside a pyramid, instead of under it, caused a tremendous problem. With the entire weight of the pyramid above, how do you keep the ceiling from collapsing? Snefru solved the problem by placing the stone blocks of the walls closer and closer to the center of the room as they went higher. As the walls were built up, the very top block forming the ceiling only spanned a few inches. The problem was solved and the first corbelled ceiling in history was created. The answer to why the Maidum Pyramid looks so strange lies in its construction. It was originally intended to be a step pyramid. As it neared completion, it was expanded several times, probably because it was believed that a pyramid should not be finished before the pharaoh's death. When the pyramid was completed with eight steps, Snefru was still in good health, so the construction was continued. The steps of the pyramid were filled in with fine white limestone. This was the first attempt at a true pyramid, but there was a fatal architectural flaw. The final outer casing stones were not sufficiently anchored into the body of the pyramid. Because they rested on the smooth surface of the inner step pyramid, the stones began slipping, causing the first technological disaster in history. That's why the pyramid looks so strange today. Later generations found it easy to quarry the loose stones, leaving only the steep inner core. What we see today is a result of 5,000 years of vandalism. Sneferu had to abandon his pyramid. That's why in the little chapel at its base, the large stone tablets were never inscribed. That's why the burial chamber walls were left rough and unfinished. And that's why the ancient cedar beams were never used to lift the pharaoh's sarcophagus into its final resting place. In fact, the only way we know the pyramid belonged to the pharaoh Sneferu is because of graffiti written almost a thousand years after it was built. 
The scribe, Achkeperkare Senet, visited the pyramid and wrote on the chapel. I came to see the beautiful temple of King Sneferu. I found it as though heaven were within it and the sun shining in it. May heaven rain fresh myrrh. May it drip with incense on the roof of the temple of King Sneferu. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the architect, who was Sneferu's own son, to have to go to the pharaoh and tell him that the work of the last 20 years was in ruins and that his tomb was unusable? It says a lot for the personality of Sneferu that instead of raging and giving up, he simply ordered that the site of my doom be abandoned and a new location found. Still in need of a burial place, our man Sneferu proceeded full steam ahead to build a monument even more ambitious than the My Doom disaster. A pyramid more than twice the volume of the one abandoned. A monument that would far outshine anything the world had ever seen. Here, of course, the architects had the benefit of their experience. The Dashua pyramid was designed from the beginning as a true pyramid. Learning from the earlier failure, the masons used much larger casing stones. This made it possible to properly tie them into the masonry of the pyramid. They also inclined the blocks inward toward the center of the pyramid. This technique was so successful that the pyramid is the only one with most of its outer casing stones still in place today. There's an interesting bit of graffiti here. Hundreds of years after Sneferu was dead, a priest by the name of Wainalk came here and wrote his name. He still wanted to be associated with Sneferu. The hieroglyphs are interesting for priest. There's a little bowl here that's pouring out water. That means to purify. And if you put a man behind it, it's a man who purifies, a priest. That's Wenonk. From the entrance, it's a very long way down into the body of the pyramid, more than 230 feet. One of the longest and most difficult descending passages of all the pyramids. The finely polished blocks of the wall are smooth, surprisingly cold to the touch. The passage still has the railroad tracks, used by the excavators in the 1950s when they removed the rubble from Sneferu's burial chamber. The passage was designed to lower the sarcophagus into the heart of the pyramid. Once the corridor descends beneath the bedrock, there are no more smooth blocks, and the walls become very rough. We still have to go another 150 feet underground, beneath the pyramid, into the bedrock. After bending over so long, it's a relief and a shock to enter a narrow room with a 41-foot corbelled ceiling. Incredible. How are we? We aren't even in one of the burial chambers yet. It's merely a vestibule, almost as if Sneferu is saying, welcome. To get to the burial chamber, you have to climb up a swaying rope ladder. Then, the entrance to Sneferu's burial chamber is reached through a hole in the top of the wall. This is the reason for the massive ladder. After the rope ladder, this one seems very firm. 
When you're high on the ladder, it first hits you. All four walls are stepped inward to form a corbelled ceiling. It's incredible. Crawling through the narrow tunnel made by ancient tomb robbers, we finally hit the corridor through which Snefru's mummy would have passed on the way to the burial chamber. Amazingly, there's a strong constant breeze of fresh air here. Some investigators think there are hidden passages yet to be discovered. The thing about Sneferu was, he didn't give up after the Maidum disaster. He built this. When it was completed, it was the greatest room on the planet. It goes up 55 feet. Mohammed, I'm not my father. Shukran. 55 feet up, corbelled ceiling. The walls go in all the way up to the top. But there was a problem. The walls started to move under the tremendous weight of the pyramid above it. Down here are cedar beams. 4,000 years old. They had to be brought in when the walls started to move. There were problems here too. The walls started to crack, move inward, and to make sure that the entire thing didn't collapse, they brought in the beams to hold it up. Originally, the Dashur Pyramid was intended to be a true pyramid. But when the problem of the burial chamber developed, Sneferu's architects decided to finish it by reducing the angle from 54 degrees to 43 degrees, which is why it's called the Bent Pyramid. This reduced the amount of stone needed to complete the pyramid and lessened the weight on the chambers inside. Despite this, the pyramid was still too dangerous for the burial of Sneferu's mummy. Sneferu had built the two largest buildings in the history of the world, and both were unusable. Amazingly, he didn't give up. But now, time was running out for the aging pharaoh. He had to build a successful pyramid for his final resting place. The bent pyramid must have inspired a sense of pride among the Egyptians. Instead of a bent